As a kid, I never really read much. I hated books. I was a dummy child who would never sit and pay attention to anything that didn't instantly capture my imagination and make me laugh. One time, my mom took me to the library, and in the back, there were these three spiral bookcases for kids' books no one read. The outlier books collecting dust and full of grime, falling apart pretty much. And among those books was a small one called Captain Underpants. Now, immediately, I chuckled. I was intrigued as a nine-year-old boy. I was astonished at what I was witnessing. A book named Captain Underpants? This had me enthralled. This had me overjoyed. The cover with the purposely misspelled words like laughs, the bald chubby dude on a tower with other kids hanging on behind him clearly involved in his antics. This was art to me instantly. This was something I could get behind as a kid. Over the course of all the years to come, I would read Captain Underpants up until high school. I would dive headfirst into these stories, every fresh nuanced tale about our superhero and the kids in question, George and Harold. My favorite stories such as Captain Underpants and the preposterous plight of the purple potty people, or Captain Underpants and the wrath of the wicked wedgie woman, or my favorite one, Captain Underpants and the big bad battle of the bionic booger boy part 2, the revenge of the ridiculous robo boogers. Those titles were incredible. This series and its titles were art for a juvenile boy. These were everything. These were peak comedy. Every page is barely a paragraph. Some chapters even famous for being the shortest in the book. Some chapters were flip books leading for you to flip the page back and forth, back and forth to create the action. As a kid, can, can you just imagine this? Imagine being a nine-year-old boy. I imagine it, please. Just imagine it. Going to school every day. Bored out of your mind. Everything sucks. You live in Florida. You're too poor for video games. Everything is just raining because you live in Florida, but yet you can read this. A juvenile, fart potty filled humor classic series. Something that actually makes you genuinely laugh as a kid. Something that you feel is yours and only yours. You feel like these stories are made for you, your stupid childish humor. You feel like you're the kid in these stories. Changing the letters of the school tiles, pulling pranks on your annoying teachers. You feel like a kid. There isn't some mature, stupid theme, some greater life lesson. No, for once you're just a kid. These stories meant a lot to me creatively. So I was pleased as punch, pleased as punch I tell you, to hear they were making a movie for my favorite series. And the movie does a masterpiece. Captain Underpants! The origin issue. It's so good. Out of every animated movie out there, praised by the world, Spider-Verse, Lego Movie, pfft, they're, they're, they're nothing! They're nothing in the eyes of Captain Underpants, the first epic movie. This movie is incredible, a special, rare movie no one talks about. It's cinema at its finest, pure friendship, pure heroism, I love it! This movie is directed by the same director of Turbo, the guy that made the movie about the very fast nail. Ignore that part though, I am being genuine when I say that Captain Underpants is incredible. Among a year of superhero films when this came out, you had Wonder Woman, Logan, Thor, all those massive action movies. But this was my favorite superhero movie. This was exactly what the world needed, but it was not ready. Sure this movie made good money, but I don't think it was praised enough. It was not loved enough. This world did not deserve this movie when it came out. From the writing, to the directing, to the voice acting, to the style, everything about this movie plays into itself in the most true, authentic form, while it just feels like it was literally ripped from the books it was based off of. From the fart jokes, to the poopy pants, to the giant frankfurters, this movie is incredible. This is simply how you do a kid's movie and make it true to yourself and its audience. Anyone with the slightest amount of juvenile humor can enjoy this movie. The intro kicks off with these two main kids singing the DreamWorks song. <laughs> How can you not love that? We all do that ourselves from time to time, and here it just feels insanely authentic. This immediately goes into a hand-drawn feeling comic sequence where the boys explain who Captain Underpants is. This instantly pulls childhood fans into the world knowing that this is a faithful adaptation. There's no sense of corporate greed wanting to bank off a children's property. This feels like someone just wants to make a dope kids movie. We meet the principal, Principal Krupp. He rips up their book and you instantly see these little nerds' friendship. Harold is sad about the comic book, George reassures him nicely and quickly. Hey everybody! 
Wait, one second. Hi, I'm George Beard, and this is my best friend Harold Hutchins. Hey. Oh man. It's okay, we got more ideas. Their constant friendship energy is awesome. You also see little nods and easter eggs to other Captain Underpants books in the air, which is really cute. These boys obviously don't like the principal, and everyone in life had their own kind of crup. That one old meanie superior who you just felt hated everything, like they just wanted the world grey and boring and drab, that's just how it is growing up through school. Krupp is angry at these boys for changing the school sign, he's so angry his hairpiece flies up and down with such charming animation, and you're already able to tell that this animation style is simply perfect. Everything in this movie is slightly uneven, everything has a wobbly line, nothing is perfect, everything is very detailed and stands out. Mr. Krupp's office is cold and blue, with the only thing moving in the room being an old fan. Meanwhile the boys treehouse is full of life like a colorful wonderland. The style this movie presents, in the movement, the details, the color schemes, everything is just way too perfect. But yet it's not. Nothing in this world is perfect, and that's what makes it perfect. Krupp wants to do something to stop these boys' antics, but has no proof of anything they've ever done. You see a montage of everything they've done, including a 2D tiger, which, which, is, which is just perfect. That's a moment when doing something inherently less grand is way more funny than modeling a whole tiger and putting it in there. A 2D cardboard cutout is way funnier than having an actual animated tiger. I adore these kids' constant fourth wall breaks. They add to the humor, add to their friendship, and charm of the movie. These boys have power over their own movie and that's what you love about it. They tell about when they first met in class, we get a Uranus joke. The seventh planet from the sun is called. <laughs> they do it. They, they do that joke. That's like, that's like peak comedy right there. Uranus. Th th that's peak. I also love how they manipulate the flashback fourth wall breaks for their own amusement by safely grabbing each other but flicking the annoying kid out of frame. The boys have to go to school on a Saturday, which breaks their heart, leading for everything to be over the top. Intense heavy rainfalls, trees lose leaves, people walk into school like a prison camp. This movie has a never ending amount of imagination. At the school, there's an invention fair. Everyone is of course bored, so the boys save the day by sabotaging a toilet invention by this nerd. But this nerd has a backup plan for that. He has a turtle that watched them. A spy turtle, oh no! Krupp uses this info to threaten to separate them into different classes. And that's what's beautiful! These dudes' biggest fear in the whole movie is being in separate classes. How innocent is that? It's so small and wholesome. These boys get so sad over it that they create hypotheticals about losing their friendships with sock puppets. The creativity in this movie just never ends. Within months, we'll be awkwardly bumping into each other at the mall. Oh, hey George. Hey. Do I know you? These boys try to steal the turtle so they can be safe, but it turns out that Krupp kept it with him everywhere he went. I carry him wherever I go. INCLUDING THE SHOWER! I love that the inanimate object is just given life. It's adorable. It doesn't need to make sense. It's just cute. Krupp is about to separate their classes, but they hypnotize him and stop him from doing so. They save the turtle, and the turtle's happy, which is cute. These boys then use the hypno ring to turn Krupp into the greatest superhero ever known. Captain Underpants. Go, Captain Underpants. What's up, boy? Iconic moment. Stan. Stan Captain Underpants. King. Legend. We love him. This is where the slapstick begins. And Usually I rag on slapstick, but here it's beautifully fun. In a lot of movies, slapstick is used as a crutch instead of writing actual jokes, instead of having real humor. But the slapstick here fits. It fits intensely because there's no danger. It's not at an expense of a joke, it adds to it. It's so over the top that this fat dude fighting a balloon is so just charming. And the kids driving a crane is crazy. Him jumping out a window creating a man-shaped hole, it feels like a classic cartoon. The boys eventually realize that they can turn him to and from Captain Underpants by spraying him with water and snapping their fingers. They take him to his house and realize how lonely everything feels. He, he's got a fork and sad Cheerios. It's, it's a sad life for this man. The boys realize their life can be easier though by just having him being Captain Underpants all the time. But then this man shows up. This this man right here. This, this, this player. Professor Poopy Pants. He's the villain. He's the villain of this movie. His name is Poopy Pants. Poopy Doopy Stoopy Pants. He gets accidentally hired as a teacher at the school and I love how when this man leaves, he doesn't use a door handle, he uses an axe to handle the door. 
This man's goal in life is to get kids to never be able to laugh again, because his name is Poopy Pants. The boys teach Captain Underpants about having fun, but he takes it a little too overboard, leading for Krupp to come back to normal and separate the boys. And I love how exaggerated all of this is. <gasps> It actually feels really sad. You just you just want these boys to have friendship. You just want them to have friendship, man. Meanwhile, Poopy Pants does experiments on the nerd boy and uses his nerdy dumbness to create a no laugh ray to make everyone unable to laugh. Also, while making a massive toilet. This is where we get the big ending battle. But what makes this big battle so amazing is the flip o rama In the books, the most iconic part was creating your own action by flipping a page in the book back and forth, back and forth. The fact that they included this in this movie is so special and heartwarming. They truly just included everything that made the book special to a kid. He even accidentally rips a page. I did that. I did that as a kid. While fighting, Captain Underpants comes back to fight, but but is captured. The boys are also captured and we get an incredible animated sequence inside these boys' brains. This movie never stops surprising you with creativity and throwing something new at you. These boys nearly lose their ability to laugh, but they're saved when Poopy Pants mentions Uranus again. <laughs> <laughs> and this causes the boys to laugh so hard that they overpower the toilet. But that's not the end of it. Poopy Pants uses a shrink big guy ray to get big. Harold gets a big hand and slaps Poopy Pants, and inside the toilet, Captain Underpants gains actual superpowers, becoming the real superhero we all know and love. Ah! And the day is saved. And these boys realize that in reality, no matter what kind of classroom or separation they have, they'll always be best friends. They turn Krupp back to normal again and realize maybe Krupp is so cold and mean because he has no one in his life. He's lonely, so they help him find someone. They realize that just having someone in your life is so important and shouldn't be overlooked. But this isn't played off as the main lesson for the movie because boom, mini toilets attack and a sequel is set up. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Now, this is a great movie. It's a great movie because throughout the entire runtime, there's no sense of artificial storytelling. There are no cheap jokes in this movie. This is one animated movie in the world where fart jokes and toilet jokes are justified. They're actually earned and adorable. Seeing this movie be a reality actually means a lot. The original books would be banned in schools for being too immature for kids, for air quote encouraging children to disobey, and to the that I say fart. These books were specifically made for kids. This movie is made for kids and anyone wanting to remember what it was like to be a kid. The slapstick, the innocent conflict of being in different classes, the insanely childish name of the villain, the over the top creativity, everything has a purpose to push only one message, that this is for people with a kid's heart. Anyone who rolls their eyes at Captain Underpants' fart jokes honestly has given up. They've become Krupp in his cold blue room. I don't think this movie or books are encouraging children to disobey in any way. They encourage children to laugh. Simply laugh. And that's the best part. All these books want to do is be entertainment in the most normal, childish way. And the fact that this movie embraces that full force is perfect. The faithful adaptation of this movie just warms my heart. It warms my heart that this was made, and that it was made with such handmade feeling authenticity. This movie is perfect. It's poopy pants perfect. It takes the dumbest premise as these juvenile books and turns them into something wholesome, heartwarming, and just a movie about friendship and adolescence. All that matters in this movie is being a kid, and all that matters is having a friend. All that matters is laughing. When I was a kid, I would dress up like Captain Underpants. I would run into the living room in my tidy whities and a blanket around my back because it felt like a dumb, stupid kid story just made for me. These books truly made me smile as a kid. They truly inspired me, seeing how strong these boys' friendship was, and how much they were willing to have fun with someone who was just a mean old superior to them. Nowadays, you have to really search for a good, authentic animated movie, made for one specific audience and not relating to the masses. And this movie feels like it only cares enough to appeal to the audience it's made for. 
The people that just want to laugh. The people that just want to remember what it was like being a kid. Going to school, waiting for your weekend that felt like it was never going to end. Having the best friend to hang out with and be the class clown in school. You wanted the attention because you wanted to feel like you had the world in the palm of your hands. As a kid, you wanted your own playground. Too many movies are so quick to tell kids to grow up and realize the world isn't made for them. And to that, I say poopy pants. Let kids be kids. Let kids feel like they have their own world. They manipulate their own world, they create their own world, just let them laugh. Let them play and have fun. Let it be this wondrous treehouse that so many of us wish we had. Some days I just wish I could go back to being that kid I was. Ignoring my school teacher and reading Captain Underpants under my desk, feeling like I was having fun no matter where I was. But sadly I can't. <laughs> but I can remember what it was like. I can remember what it was like to be a kid and enjoying those things, laughing at the stupidest, most juvenile things like farts and not having a care in the world except hanging out with your best friend.